Elle est la maman de deux euh, garçons qui ont été repêchés au premier tour dans la Ligue nationale et l'un d'eux porte le numéro 14 pour les Canadiens de Montréal. Sans plus tarder, Amanda Suzuki. Femme d'Hockey. Welcome to Femme d'Hockey. Thank you very much for having me. It's a real pleasure. You're a mother of two, two uh, well-known uh, hockey player. One who is a little bit our favorite because he's playing for Montreal, Nick, but also Ryan is uh, he's been drafted as well in the first round uh, yep. in two years ago. So yeah, 2019 from yeah to Carolina. Well, How did you make it happen? How do you, what is your secret recipe to grow up to professional <laughs> hockey player like that? Yeah, I've been asked that a couple of times. I just, I, I think they have really good genes. Their dad, Rob, was a really good athlete growing up. Um, I don't think I have, uh, I think I would have been a really good sports person, but I, I didn't really grow up um, playing any sports. Um, so I have to give all the credit to my husband, um, to give them the athletic genes. And then it was just the passion of them falling in love with the game of hockey. And, uh, we just gave them every opportunity that they wanted to, uh, succeed in that. So we were, it's a privilege to have watched them grow up and, uh, play a sports, you know, and earn a living with something that they love. Vous, euh, vous venez de London, Ontario. You're from London, Ontario, and it's a uh, it's a place where hockey is very uh, there. So, how did the hockey come into your life? How did it all start for you? Well, it's uh, for for the kids or for, for you me, for, for, for me you personally, personally. It was the boys. The boys. Um, I had never watched a game of hockey in my life. Uh, my husband loved watching hockey and it would be painful for me to have to sit through a hockey game. I was bored. I wasn't interested, didn't know any of the hockey players. Um, so I basically, since once the boys started getting involved in hockey, that was my, that's when I fell in love with the game because I lived it through their eyes and yeah. I saw how important it was to them. And so it became very important to me. And I'm a big, I'm just a big fan of both of my boys and all the boys that I've met through hockey, all the sons nice. of all these wonderful hockey parents across Ontario and the United States and Europe. I've met a lot of wonderful people through the sport. So, I mean, it's because of the boys that they brought me to love the game. And now I'm sure it's you always watching it and you have two kind of games to watch. And now with the NHL, with the, the Nick, with, and I was saying Suzuki, both are Suzuki. <laughs> <laughs> well, say that, you know, the last name in the hockey. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's crazy. So, um, so before your two sons, you were not, there was no favorite players or it no. was not a Maple Leaf, uh, Cheering no. team, so it no. started with. <laughs> sorry, all you brilliant HL, NHL players out there. I didn't have a favorite. <laughs> I didn't have okay. a favorite team. I didn't have a favorite person. I know a few guys like Wayne Gretzky and Ty Domi and Ty. Um, <laughs> you know Ty, yeah. No, so, so funny. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, I know those. I know those big names, but. I never watched them growing up. No. Okay. And for now, how are you going to choose between Nick and Ryan? You have to, because it didn't start. It's all is with the uh, Chicago Vols uh, yeah. right now, but it's going to jump into the NHL sooner than later. So you have to make a decision. How it's going to be <laughs> for you. It would yeah. be. Well, growing up, Well, when they played in the OHL, Ryan played for Barry Colts and Nick played for Owen yes. Sound Attack. And we would just, whenever they played against each other, I just said, please don't hurt each other. And they were always on different shifts. So I would cheer 
for okay. each of them during their shift. So luckily they never really played against each other um, on the same shift. So I would wear one Owen Sound mitt on one hand and a Barry mitt on the other. <laughs> it's a good way and to so do it. I, I was such a good mom. And then I would move from section to section. So if the bear, I would sit with the Barry parents one, one period and move over to the Owen Sound on the other period. And, and so there's no favorites. And uh, I just, I cheer them on the best, you know, the best way we can as parents. Okay. You already said that you're, uh, you are at your son, that you are a man first and then a hockey player. What do you mean by that? What is the, uh, the learning you want him to know about? It has to understand and he's a man first and then he's a hockey player. Yeah, well, I, I think the, you always have to be true to yourself and be the humble person. Um, he's always going to be Nick to me um, and Nick to the rest of the family. Right. And then he's, the, he's a family person. We love him unconditionally. And then it's, his job is the hockey player. Yep. That's a job. That's a and job. It's the, after your job is done for the day, You go back to being Nick Suzuki, the the son, the brother, the, the cousin, you know, uh, the nephew to everybody. Like he's just, it's his job is the hockey player. But outside of that, he's just our our kid, Nick. He's a human. He, he's someone yep. part of the family and the job mm -hmm. he's doing. Yeah, we see him on the TV and it, it's a kind of celebrity and but he has to always keep in mind don't yep, forget where got, you're coming from and where yep. you're you're gonna be at the end of it yeah he's a human being he's got feelings he yes he listens to you know he does his job but he's also got you know when he's when he's done his job he can just relax and be who he wants to be whether that's going home and playing with the cat Or going home and playing with his video games or going and watching the football game. He's still, to me, he's still a kid. But he's, he's still 20, a kid. He's 22. He's 22. And he still has, he's still in the prime, prime young man. He's just starting his career. Yeah. He's, he's still, still, it's a lot, it's a lot to put on a 22 year old shoulders, but he's always been one that can handle That pressure. kind of pressure, oh, yeah. Yep, and he's he takes constructive criticism and he listens to it and he, you know, he makes the changes on the fly when he needs to or what he takes instruction well, but he's also able to let some of it roll off his back, right? Okay, like like a dog, like water on I the dog. I don't think he, yeah, right, exactly. And mm -hmm. how did you react when you saw he was wearing the A? The assistant is a, because it's a big, you know, role to, it's big shoes to, to play. wear. Yeah. Well, I think we were, sh we were surprised to be honest, yeah. like, but he's always been a quiet leader. Yes. And, um, he was always a part of the leadership in the OHL. Like mm -hmm. he became an assistant captain fairly early on in his OHL career And even in his junior career, he yes. was, you know, a captain or assistant. So he's got that quiet leadership um, presence and he's calm. And I think it was Brandon Gallagher said that he's got the ear of the young guys. And so the young guys, they all, you know, get together. And yes. so he's a support and somebody to talk to at their age level. Right. So, uh, yeah, it's interesting to have a group of assistants who can talk to other group in, in the, the locker other, room. There, like there's the veterans yes. and then there's the, the rookies or the young guys. Um, and they're, Nick is closer to the rookies and the younger guys' experiences yes. and knows what it's like coming into a team being traded or being yes. brought up or whatnot. And You know, I think he just brings a different element to the conversation. Um, not that he has years and years of knowledge like a brand, 
Brandon or mm. a Toffoli or a, a you Weber, know, a Weber yeah. or a Petrie or whatever. And they bring something also to that conversation. But, at, you know, there is the youth of the group too that mm. needs somebody to go to as well. So I hope that's Nick to them. Yeah. And, and there is a bunch of younger guys this year and it's important mm-hmm. to have a voice for them. And as a, as a teenager, what was his uh, pre-meal to go? Uh, you were cooking for him or he was doing for himself before a game. What was his pre-meal? I, I think it go-to? was always kind of chicken and rice or chicken and pasta. <laughs> that was like, I think that's what his billet mom, like when he went to the OHL, I think it was always some kind of chicken with a pasta or a carb, whatever carb it was. And that was always their pregame meal. Very boring, very boring. <laughs> and for But Ryan, was the same? same. Um, I think he was a little bit different. Um, he probably got some vegetables thrown in there as well. <laughs> okay, But a little bit more billet, healthy. <laughs> yeah, his billet family had a lot. Uh, they did a lot of barbecuing. And so he might have had more steak versus chicken okay. but uh he i think it was pretty much the the same kind of uh pre-game yeah, nothing yeah. too heavy and then they would eat like kings afterwards you know after the game so and which one is more like you <laughs> I, nick n- I, Nick and I look alike, I guess we're more, we're more, but I think Ryan might be a little bit more like me personality wise, a little bit more, you know, uh, he's got a great sense of humor. I think I do too. Um, I'm a little bit more, you know, out, I don't know, a little bit outgoing. And so he's a very social butterfly, whereas Nick has got more, my husband's, you know, quiet, Um, he'll speak when he has something important to say and all that kind of stuff. Very bright. They're both boys are extremely bright, which they get from their dad. And um, anyway, yeah, I think I, maybe I'm sure Ryan, I should... uh, maybe Ryan might disagree, but I think <laughs> Ryan and I kind of have, we're a little bit more emotional. Like we get mad and we get <laughs> sad and we get happy. <laughs> you show more your emotion. Yeah, I think we wear our heart on the sleeves. That is what both Ryan, Ryan and I are. And I heard you have some superstition and some routine before a game. And what, can you explain us what it is or? Well, it was during the playoffs. Okay. So I had a very a routine that I would post something on Instagram. I would post something on Twitter. I would, my girlfriend, Jen would come over and we would have, She would bring me a tea from Tim Hortons and she would get her drink. And then after the first period, we would have a alcoholic beverage and then we would have our snack and it was chips and dip. And, and then it, we realized that all the chips and dip and the alcohol were not helping our waistline. So we, we quickly had to stop. We were like, thank God they're done because we can't eat any more chips and dips. No, it's good, but we have to be careful sometimes. <laughs> yes. So we're not doing that again. Like the chips and dips are out of the equation. Yeah. So I don't really have any superstitions during the regular, regular season. because it would just be too much. Like no. trying to plan all these Instagrams and all the Twitter and <laughs> when you're working full time and then you're just like, Oh, it's game time. And I forgot to do something. <laughs> so, yeah. And what are you doing as a living? I work for the provincial government ministry of finance here in Ontario. Wow. Great job. Mm-hmm. Big job. Yeah. So a lot of, on your tro- shoulder as well. Yeah. But, I've, you know, I've been working with them for 20 plus years and wow. yeah. So it's a, it's a busy, it's a busy schedule. Plus when the kids were younger going, getting them to practices, picking them up from school because they went. Um, to private schools. So you had to go drive and pick them up and get them to practice. And my husband also works. So between the two of us, we had to get things going and move around. And so now with them both out of the house, we're like, <laughs> we don't know what to do with ourselves because we've got all this free time now. 
<laughs> but you also have to watch them on TV and yes, sometimes yeah. visit and then watch the game. And when they're going yeah. to Toronto, it's all. You, and last yeah. year you had a couple of times. No, but last year you we were not able to go and watch no. the game. We came to a couple of the playoffs. We were there for each playoff round. Okay. So that was, it was so exciting in April when we could get into a game. And it was just so, uh, I don't know. I was just so happy to be at the Bell Center and <laughs> sitting there watching, even though you have to still wear your mask and everything. Yes. I was just so, we were just so excited to be there and to see hockey again. I couldn't believe how much I missed going to the arena and watching a game. I really missed it a lot. Yeah, and I, I can imagine it's the same, but not the same at the same time. There's a lot of same in my yeah. <laughs> question, but when you become a professional, professional hockey player and you have different range of age, it's not the same than when you play minor hockey or junior hockey. It's That's right. kind of different yeah. way to be in contact with the rest of family. Right. It's really hard. Um, well, because players come and go, right? So one yes. minute you might be friendly with one family and then they're off their kid, you know, the, they're off to another organization. So it's really hard. And I mean, the Toffoli's have been through this with uh, Tyler for years yeah. and same with the Andersons, you know, you know, they were with Columbus and then now yeah. in Montreal and, and all that kind of stuff. So, I mean, they've been around the gig a lot longer than we have, but it was just exciting to meet other parents and, <laughs> And, and talk to other parents. <laughs> and, and Nick was exchanged before starting his NHL career. So he was draft. Yeah, he did the, 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 the preseason camp. And then he was draft uh, exchanged to Montreal. He did his mm -hmm. last year in junior and then started his career with Montreal. Correct. Yeah. And did I hear well then he was at five or six years old? He has a, a picture of him with the number 14 with a Canadian Montreal shirt jersey. I, I, yes, that he's his first hockey team in Lambeth when he first started playing hockey. He was part of the Montreal Canadiens team. Yeah. How and cool he's just is. a little, we have a picture of him in his, in his little uniform. And so, you know, now at 22 or 20, he was draft or he traded to the Montreal Canadians when he was 20, 21. Yeah. So And it's, it's kinda, very cool. It's kind of so, cool. On va rentrer dans mon segment de barrage. Let's uh, go into the shootout segment. It's a this or that question. Okay. The first okay. question will be okay. watching a game. Do it's mm -hmm. beer or wine? Wine. Wine. White or red? Red. Red wine. Mm-hmm. Okay, we have the same taste. <laughs> <laughs> I will drink wine with anybody, anywhere. <laughs> I'm that kind of girl too. Uh, which type of player will you will be if you were a hockey player? Offense or defense? Um, offense. Offense. Let's attack. Mm -hmm. Are you a lefty or a right-handed? A right-handed. Mm -hmm. Like Ryan. Ryan's a left lefty, lefty and Nick is right. And Nick is a righty. Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> But there are different. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Country or pop song? Pop. Pop. But I hear uh, Nick prefer a country Nick song. loves country and I don't know why. How, <laughs> oh, I don't know how he got into that. But it's probably from the OHL, the guys that he hung around with in the OHL. So, but he comes by it honestly because he loves, he loves He loves the country music, <laughs> it's but funny. it's the poppy, it's the poppy new country, which yes. I like too, but I'm more of a eighties, eighties kind of pop. Okay. So what is your favorite song of all time? Of all time? Mm -hmm. uh, Or dancing, dancing queen by ABBA. Oh, incredible. Uh, I'm with you with this one. Dancing queen. I dance no matter, I don't care where or when, if that song comes on, I'm dancing. If it's in the grocery store, I'm dancing. So if yeah. we hear it on Saturday, I want you to dance. I will be dancing. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. Okay. You said you did, you were not watching hockey before, but if I ask you Lemieux or Gretzky, who it will be? 
Mario Lemieux um, or Wayne Gretzky? Wayne Gretzky. Yeah. You know him a bit, probably yeah. a little bit more better. I think it's more because he's from just out, he's probably just from about 45 minutes away in Brantford. Yeah. Yes, yeah. goes by and very involved and still involved. And, and Walter, I've met Walter Gretzky a couple of times at different tournaments and, and whatnot. So at Femme Dockey, we like to bring lights to women involved in hockey. It could be hockey players. It could be a volunteer hockey mom or someone in the industry. Who is the woman who inspire you in, in the hockey industry? In the hockey industry? Um... I honestly am inspired by all the moms Hi. that I've had the privilege to meet. Um, and I know they're not famous, but we're, you know, we organized like potlucks. We organized, you know, the, the, the lunches out or the, you know, we did all the fundraising. And mm -hmm. I, I just think every hockey mom it needs to be commended and put on a pedestal. I know the dads are important as well. They are. But I think a lot of the organization and the running of things um, comes down to that hockey mom and they are important. Um, and every kids, all the boys and girls out there that, you know, their moms are there cheering on. Uh, and tying those shoelaces, you know, the hockey skates. I, I agree with you. And that's one of the reasons I decided to start Fam Daki. It's to highlight just, just to highlight all those women who are involved. And a lot of time they are not into uh, the public space because they are doing it every day and every uh, weekend. And they are the general manager of the family because they yeah. are planning that, you know, they, 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 they're traveling the kids, they're making sure everything is okay and they are at home. And so, most of the time we talk about the father but not to the mother and yeah. all the, the important role they have in the, the career well, of our kids i know i couldn't have um i i loved all the hockey moms that were around my kids going through hockey from the alliance that the boys grew up playing into the ohl all the billet moms out there yes that were Like I know my two billet moms for, or three, because Nick had two and Ryan had one or two, I guess two, but they <laughs> all were there to help me make sure my kid was successful. And so, you know, we did a lot, like every hockey mom had something, like if you needed something, somebody would have it in their purse or their bag of tricks. <laughs> They, you know, like you need a hockey glove. Oh, here, here's an extra <laughs> hockey glove or here's this or here's that, you know? Here's a pop. If your tummy wasn't like, if your tummy wasn't feeling well, they would rush out and get you a ginger ale. And, you know, they couldn't find me or something. They were always taking care of. They It's a big sisterhood and a big family, a big community. It's becoming together. It yeah. And we, they said uh, it takes a village to, to uh, grow to up. Raise a child. Yeah. Yes, it, it's a, it is. Mm -hmm. uh, and do you think we do enough to highlight those women in the hockey place? Um, I don't think first, no, I don't think we do, but, um, I think through these types of conversations and women in hockey themselves, like I look at all the people, you know, on Sportsnet or TSN, and it's amazing that these, I'm just learning about all these women, um, sportscasters and their backgrounds. And I think that's amazing. And I, I want to support each and every single one of them. But it all comes down to those boys in the NHL had a mom that yes. had to had to bring them to the, you know, to the rink at God knows when in the morning and, you know, always have a snack on hand or, you know, you know, wipe away the tears when something something happened in the locker room or the coach yelled at them or, mm -hmm. you know, they had a fight with a teammate or they got, you know, you know, all the injuries that they sustain through a game and, and whatnot. And I, my, I do, I have a great support. Um, and they were all the hockey moms that I encountered. Thank you to all of you. It's very important. Now let's go to the tape to tape pass. Because hockey, c'est un jeu de passe. 
in hockey, it's a pass game. You know, you need to do a really good pass and a tape to tape pass to uh, do a goal, and it's the big assist there. What was the moment or the person who made a big difference in your life? Uh, who changed it all? It could be a, a moment, a person, or a company who did something. But it, it's for you now. It's it's just something it's you change. Yeah, I think it was my. To be honest, it was my husband. Really, oh, he's my best it. friend. And he's been such a great support. Well, it's See, now I'm getting emotional. I'm getting emotional. Oh, but but, I <laughs> uh, he's he's made a huge. Oh. We've known each other for 30 plus years, and he's wow. been my best friend through all the good and ups and the downs, and you know, been my partner all the way through. And yeah, that, that's very important to find that someone who can be your love and but your friend as well. And yep. I'm we've sure we've been through it all. We've been up ups and downs and he's, you know, we've, he's given us a life that we can afford to put the kids through hockey and go here, go there, you know, fly across to Finland to play, you know, select hockey one summer. And, you know, I, I've had the privilege of going to a lot of places and, you know, he held the fort down while I was away and vice versa. And, You know, one, you know, taking one kid to one place and the other kid to the other place. And, but uh, our true love is our boys and they bring us, he, those boys bring us together and we, we're a nice, happy little family. I miss my boys too, so much. I can imagine. Mm -hmm. And now they're growing up and, but you can see them during summer and Christmas yeah. time, but they have I, both are very, uh, they all have their lives. Yeah, they're, they're growing up and they're moving on. And, you know, I, we're, we're so happy for them and excited for what life is going to offer them. And we love the fact that Nick is with us in Montreal. <laughs> yeah. And he loves it too. He <laughs> loves being in Montreal. And now I give you the opportunity to give back and lend a hand to someone or an organization uh, who you want to bring lights into. Um, I just think I would love to support any of the Montreal, like I know the community hospital or the hospital in Montreal is a big um, support, the, the Montreal Canadians support the, the, uh, the hospital, but I also would love to support a lot of the small businesses that have been impacted during the last year of uh, COVID. And the work that I do, I, I've seen the impact on small right. business and some have not made it through the small businesses, uh, small due to the COVID with uh, their businesses being impacted. Um, so I would, you know, there's so many small businesses that have gone online just to survive. Mm -hmm. And I miss, I miss those businesses that are out there on the street where you can walk in and have a conversation with somebody. I miss that, that connection yeah. with people because I'm a shopper too. <laughs> and I, I, I love, you know, but I would love to support any kind of small business venture. Yeah, just to be there, making sure then we are with the local business owner uh, who has, a, you know, a pignon sur rue and go there and buy something local, yeah. buy some local. Yeah. So we make sure we. Uh, and if there's anybody out there that uh, you recommend for me to to support, please let me know, because I would, you know, I I want to I want to help the small business out in Quebec and in Ontario. Oh, I'll have a, a list, a, a shopping a list. list when you're coming to Montreal, I'll have many good places to uh, to show you around. There's so many yeah. uh, beautiful uh, a business and restaurant, and we also have to think about that. All the restaurants, yeah, has been like so all far. the restaurants, uh, and there's raw. Uh, Nick takes us to different restaurants in Montreal that have been recommended to him. So. Whenever we go, we try to find a new restaurant um, to support. So if you yeah. like pasta, you should go to Gradiella. Okay. okay. The last segment, it's uh, the locker room, uh, you know, the untold story about, uh, you know, for sure, I would like to have something. We, we see Nick is very calm and cool, but I'm sure there's some trickiest 
story to tell about his uh, younger age or, uh, you know, all the competition between Ryan and Nick, because I heard he was very competitor. Competitive. Um, yeah, he was competitive. So when he was really little, Rob was teaching him how to play checkers and Rob wouldn't let, wouldn't let Nick win. Like <laughs> when he had to win off for real. And so we had some crying episodes there because Nick got frustrated because he couldn't beat his dad at checkers. But then eventually uh, he started beating his dad uh, in checkers. So wow. I know it was a hard lesson to learn, but uh, yeah, we didn't, we didn't let them win a lot. I probably did, but <laughs> Rob was like, if he's going to learn how to play, he's got to learn how to play. Yeah. And he was, yeah, he, he and Ryan were extremely competitive, but Nick is a bit of a softy with Ryan and he would let, he would let Ryan win a few things and get away with a lot more than probably I would have to my sisters, you know, <laughs> I would have, I wouldn't have let them win, you know, like I'd be like beating them up. <laughs> Do you think it's one of the reasons he has that temper and is able to always regain confidence and make a composure. decision, of composure yeah. and a quick decision mm -hmm. when something's not going well, he's just adjusting very fast and he's doing what he has to do to make sure it's going to happen because he learned to be uh, out to say, okay, I, I'm not winning all the time, but I can change and I'm going to improve and I'll be a better next time yeah. I think he had a really different um experience in his junior career than Ryan did and he he was never the the best player on the team at any point in well like in his growing up I guess whereas Ryan was always kind of like the guy um when he was little like okay. always scoring the goals and the fastest skater and all this kind of stuff. So Ryan got a little bit more of a, you know, in the shadow still. Yeah. So, whereas Nick kind of just climbed his way quietly up the successful ladder um, on each of his teams. And, you know, I think he did it honestly. And he, he learned from every single coach he had growing up the good, the bad, and the ugly, like it, like he, he learned something from every single coach that he had. He got, he had a lot of different coaches, whereas Ryan had probably the same coach a couple of years in a row. So he didn't get exposures to different um, types of, I guess, coaching. And whereas challenge Nick had, as well. Yeah. Challenges and, and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So, so they have a completely different path to get they did in in my opinion they had a bit of a different each of them had their own path that they they took and it was different from each other yeah a, a quick question where do you know where it coming from that nickname zook zook has always been I, that was rob's nickname growing up as well okay and so it just i guess it just stuck <laughs> and it was really ryan that he was the he was Zooks to everybody Zooks, um, okay. growing up, whereas Nick, not, not so much. And I'm not really a big fan of Susie. I don't like that. No, me neither. <laughs> no. no. Nick, Nick no. it's okay, you know, Nick, because Nick, Nick is a nickname, actually. It's Nicholas. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's, but I like Zook. I like Zook. Zook. Yeah. It's cool. Yeah, Amanda, thank you very much to have uh, come to Famdaki and share a little bit of your story and the story of uh, your two sons. So thank you very much. Well, thank uh, you, Isabel. That was great. It was really nice to meet you. Thank you so pleasure. much for having me. Oh, a real pleasure.